For today's lab, we're going to look at filters at a little higher frequency. Uh, not very high, 1 megahertz, but that's significantly higher than the audio work that we did last week. Specifically, we'd like to look at LC circuits today, or resonance circuits. But before we do that, we want to do a little bit of testing uh, at 1 megahertz with with our component. So the first circuit we will look at is a simple LR circuit. This is low pass filter. The transfer function, the vo output voltage over the input voltage as a function of frequency is R over R plus J omega L, dividing the R value through to get the uh, real term one we end up with 1 over 1 plus J omega LR. The critical frequency is defined when the transfer function is 1 over 1 plus J1. Therefore, that means omega L over R must equal to 1. So the reactance of the inductor and the resistance are the same. That leads to a critical frequency of R over L, which leads to a critical uh, F sub C value 2 pi FC equals R over L, and FC equals R over 2 pi L. 300 ohm resistor and a 47 microhenry inductor, that leads to a frequency, critical frequency of 1.02 megahertz. We can define, check X of L to be 2 pi FC L of 300 ohms, which had to be because omega L over R had to be 1, and so we'll check this in the lab. So here is the lab setup. It is very simple. We have a generator, we have the scope, and we have the circuit. In the circuit we see the L, this is 47 microhenry, and the R which is 300 ohms. The input to the system is the generator, we'll measure that as V1, and we'll measure the, diff, the point between the L and the R, and that is, uh, we use, we're using the scope probe to do that. That's a times 10 probe, so you'll have to set up your channel for that. And then the grounds are connected together. On the scope, at 1 megahertz, we see this, right? We see the two signals, uh, the ma input magnitude, the output magnitude, and the phase between them. 3.4 volts RMS input, 2.43 volts RMS output and an angle between them of 45 degrees. If we do a few calculations uh, for the magnitude, the output over the input, 2.43 over 3.4 gives us a value of 0.71, which is very close to 0.707, and obviously the 45 degree point uh, is very close to uh, the critical frequency calculation 45.98 degrees versus 45 uh, degrees calculated. We're slightly off on our frequency. The calculation was for 1.02 and we're at 1 megahertz for simplicity. So the second circuit we will check is an RC filter, CR actually. With This is a high pass filter. Transfer function, same setup, V out over Vn, but now we have R over R plus 1 over J omega C. This becomes J omega RC, J omega RC plus 1, and finally J omega RC over 1 plus J omega RC. The critical frequency then is 1 over 1 plus J1 again, omega RC equals to 1, Omega C is 1 over RC, and F sub C is 1 over 2 pi RC. If we have a 300 ohm resistor and a 510 picofarad capacitor, that leads to 1.04 megahertz, and again the confirmation that X sub C 300 ohms. So now we have replaced the inductor with the capacitor. This is 510 picofarads. We have left the resistor to be the same resistor of 300 ohms. So here's the data, or the measurements. We have 3.3 volts in, we have 2.3 volts out, and minus 
0.54 degrees. Very close to the 45 degrees we would expect. Remember, we're slightly lower. We're at 1 megahertz, so slightly below the critical frequency. But certainly, we have confirmed that these values are very close to the calculated uh, critical frequency. For the next circuit, we will now put the L and C in series with the R to make an RLC circuit. Transfer function development is the same. Now we have R over R plus 1 over J omega C plus J omega L. That becomes J omega RC over J omega RC plus 1 plus J omega squared LC. If we collect the real and imaginary terms, we get J omega RC over minus omega, 1 minus omega squared LC plus J omega RC. Now the resonant frequency is defined when the real term goes to zero, which is 1 minus omega squared LC, remember the J squared becomes minus 1, is equal to zero, which means omega squared LC equals 1, which leads to omega squared equals 1 over LC, Omega naught then is 1 over LC, and F naught, or the resonant frequency in hertz, is 1 over 2 pi square root of LC. 47 microhenry inductor and 510 picofarad capacitor, we get 1.03 megahertz. If we did the calculations, we'd see that X of C and X of L are both 300 ohms. Now, in the in the lab measurement, we will see that the transfer function omega equals omega naught is then J omega RC over 1 plus omega squared LC plus J omega RC. Because the real term in the denominator goes away, we end up with J omega RC over J omega RC, which is of course 1, and really 1 at 0 degrees. So in the lab measurement, we should see the input and output the same and in phase. So here is the lab measurement. We've put the inductor back in. We've connected the capacitor and inductor together with a little clip there. We've left the rest of the circuit and we're ready to look at the measurement. So here's the signal. Uh, we see the input voltage is 3.19 volts. The output voltage is 3.19 volts and the phase between them is very close to zero. We'll reset it to check. Very close. Now, you only see one signal, but if I change channel two, you'll see that the two are actually overlaying one another, which means they were essentially one at that range. So, at this point, I would like you to take some frequency measurements above and below the resonant frequency go at least one decade below. So we're starting at one megahertz. So now go to 100 kilohertz and then up to 10 megahertz. Get enough data to make a good uh, magnitude and frequency plot. A special aspect of the series RLC circuit is associated with the transfer function plot. If we look at the typical plot, we see the transfer function magnitude versus frequency. You'll see at the resonant frequency, because the L and the C are canceling out, we should get a value of 1 as the output at the resonant frequency. But the shape of this response is highly dependent on the R value, and that is where the Q factor comes in. Now the Q factor is related to the energy storage over the energy lost, or the X over RS value for the series resonant circuit. Of course, the X can either be the capacitive reactance or the inductive reactants, but generally for series circuits, we use X value for the inductor, so omega LS over RS, the R for the series circuits. Now the Q can also be measured by doing the frequency of resonance over the bandwidth 3 dB. So the bandwidth is associated with the 3 dB point where the voltage will be 0.707, 20 log of 0.707 is minus 3 dB. So we have the bandwidth and the resonant frequency. But we see the bandwidth is and the Q value are going to be dependent on the R value. The X value will 
because of its resonance, it will stay the same. If we have a lower value of R, then that will change the Q value or a larger value of R. So if we have a smaller R value, which will give us a larger Q value, we have a much more peaked response. And this is key for RF circuits where a narrow bandwidth is required for selecting one of many signals from your antenna, for example. So in the laboratory, we will change the RS value to be 30 ohms and recollect the data. Now for the parallel case, LC parallel case, we're going to use this circuit. Now the transfer function development is fairly similar. Now, but we have now have R over R plus J omega L paralleled with 1 over J omega C. So we need to do that calculation. So J omega L parallel J omega, 1 over J omega C is omega L over omega C divided by J omega L plus 1 over J omega C. That becomes J omega L over J omega L J omega C plus 1. J omega L over 1 minus omega squared LC. So that becomes the second term. R, R plus J omega L over 1 minus J omega C. If we follow that development, we get R, 1 minus omega squared LC over 1 minus omega squared LC plus omega L. So at resonance, 1 minus omega squared LC goes to 0. Same resonant frequency as the series case. But the numerator then becomes R1 minus omega squared LC, and the denominator has the R same real term plus the plus J omega L, and of course that will go to zero. So in the data plot, we see something like this. Instead of peaking up to a value of one, it notches down to a value of zero at the resonant frequency. And so we'll take these measurements with the two R values to see the different responses. First with 300 ohms and then with 30 ohms. So this is the setup in the lab. The C and the L are now in parallel, being served by the generator and we're measuring that signal. And then the R value, in this case 300 ohms. And we'll measure that uh, across above and below the resonant frequency.